first off, let me see who here owns a barbershop. Right. Um, Alright, so as you guys know, um, I'm the owner of Capsule Barbershop in LA. Um, I'll start off with why the name Capsule. Um, I didn't really want a, a barbershop just like every other shop. Well, mo most of the shops that you guys probably see or heard of um, are like barbershop names. Like you, you see the name, you already automatically know it's a barbershop, or you read it on, on um, you know, paper or whatever, and you just know it's, let's say it's a barbershop. So I kind of wanted something based on the theme of the shop, you know. So uh, think of it as a time capsule. So I don't know if you guys see our, our logo, um, but I actually designed it myself. Uh, if you see at the top of the barber pole. Um, it's a clock and then there's an arrow pointing back. So picture it as like a time capsule. So um, like I said, based on the theme of the shop, um, you walk in, you see like the old school chairs and then um, it's pretty much a mix up of old school barber, you know, barber shop and new school. So we, we offer the traditional hot towel shaves and the old school haircuts, the gentleman's cuts, the pompadours and all that mixed with the new stuff. Um, the comb overs, the hard parts, the designs and all that, all that stuff. So. Um, that's pretty much where I got the name Capsule. Uh, secondly, um, I guess you guys are probably wondering how I was able to get Capsule out there. Like I said, it's only been open for, it'll be three years, end of May. Um, I started off just branding it, you know. Branding to me is a, is a big thing, as well as marketing. Um, the whole thing of me moving to LA by myself, not really knowing anyone was, all right, I gotta move to LA, I gotta let these people know what's up. I'm from Toronto. Um, you know, I'm a new kid on the street, you, you know, you guys gotta talk to me type of thing. So, I had to go to every industry party. Um, I mean, in LA, you guys know there's a lot of celebrities, there's a lot of just big names out there. So, I tried to hit up every, every party I could go to in Hollywood and just meet whoever it is, you know. It, it could look like a, a regular dude on the street, but that person could be a manager to someone or uh, a producer or, I don't know, whatever it is. So, I, I, I go to the, um, Go to these parties and just get on my business cards. Like, yeah, I'm a barber. I just moved here, and, and don't and, and mind you, I didn't have a shop yet. So I told them I'm mobile. You know, um, I know you guys probably have a barber, but uh, you know, I feel like I could I could hook you up. So give me a call if you can't some if you can't get a, get a hold of your barber or whatnot. So I did that, and uh, I met a lot of people. I met different owners of brands like Crooks and Castles and um, Diamond and Black Scale and a whole bunch of other people. So I started off doing that, and. Once I did open up Capsule, I had the leverage to have these guys help me brand myself and market it for me. You know, so these, these guys will put it out there. Oh, dude, we got to hit up our barber, uh, our barber Vince. He just opened up Capsule Barbershop. Uh, check them out in Hollywood, blah, 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 blah. So I did all that. They helped me do that. And at the same time, I printed out flyers. I don't know if you guys still do that or if you guys have been doing that, but um, it's kind of like the old school way, but it works. You know, all you gotta, you guys gotta get up and do that guerrilla movement. Go out there, go on the streets, go to the parties, go to the clubs, and whatever it is. Just put it on the fucking stalls, the urinals, because people, you know, I mean, us dudes, you know, we're we're taking pisses all the time. So you get, you got something to look at, you know. Um, go to the mall. Um, what works for me moving to LA was, I go out to eat. You know, I go out to eat with my wife and the waiter or whoever it is I see. I'll just talk to them like, dude, I'm a barber. I don't know if you got your, your own barber, but um, here's my car, here's my barber shop, I'll take care of you. First cuts on the house. And you know, they come in, hook them up, and they're like, dude, bring five five of your homies, or even students. You know, you get one kid in the chair, and they're like, bro, um, bring five of your guys next week, and I got you on the cut. And that shit works every time. You know, so I started doing that when I opened up Capsule. And like I said, I was the new, the new kid there. No one knew who I was. No one knew what Capsule was. Um, it was all an experiment, you know, and, um, like I said, I just took the chance and everything's been working out. Um, the hardest thing was to actually find barbers to fill the chairs. You know, so um, I put it out there on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it was, I was looking for barbers. And as you know, you barber own, uh, as you barbers know that actually own shops, it's it's hard to find to find a barber, a good barber. And um, I've hired barbers, I've fired barbers, and the main thing for me was to look for someone that have the same passion and the same motivation, the same drive that, as I do. Because if you have that one barber that's in there that's dope as fuck, but has like zero personality and has bad customer service, it just puts a hole into your name and it, it's a bad, you know, it's not a good look. So um, 
it took me a while to, to, to fill five chairs. Uh, it took me probably like a year to actually um, fill my shop up. And the crazy thing is that my shop is actually filled with barbers not even from LA. I have probably two, well now I have three, three barbers from LA. Um, one of them is actually Jules. Jules is from the Bay Area. And like I said, this whole marketing stuff and branding stuff um, goes a long way. And especially when Instagram started, as you guys all know, like shit, everyone in here probably knew, knows each other just through Instagram, you know what I mean? And for me and Jules, for example, I didn't know who he was, I just knew him through Instagram. And when he moved to LA, um, he just came by the shop, chopped it up. I didn't know him, but at the same time, I kind of felt like when he walked into the shop, I already knew who he was, just through what he posts up and all that stuff. <laughs> so he came to the shop, chopped it up, and uh, next thing you know, he's working right beside me. And um, I did that with all my other barbers. Dave, uh, he's also here, he's one of my barbers. He also started off as a client. He was a client of ours, and um, he just wanted to be part of the movement, you know? And my whole thing was to create a shop, uh, not like every other shop. You know, when I went to LA before I opened up Capsule, um, I did my research. I walked around, went to all the different neighborhoods, went to all the different barber shops, and each shop is just like every other shop, every neighborhood barber shop. You walk in there, you sit down, and that's what I did. I literally sat down, analyzed it. They're like, you here try to get cut. I'm like, no, I'm just checking out the shop. <laughs> Some of them looked at you know, looked down at me like, what the fuck is this dude doing? But um, you know, it's something I had to do. You know, I didn't want to open up a shop not knowing how the shop is actually ran, how the barber game was in LA. Um, so, you know, I went to all these other shops and like I said, at every neighborhood barber shop, you walk in, no appointments. They probably charge like eight dollars haircut. Um, and I was just like, hey, if I open up my shop, I'll make sure I'm gonna show in every shop here in LA. I'm gonna bring the whole East Coast Toronto feel to LA. And um, that's exactly what I did. And um, another thing in LA, I'm, I mean, being from Toronto, I know how it is here too with barbers, is that a lot of barber shops and a lot of barbers don't really work well together. You know, like seeing this here alone, like me being from Toronto is, is, is a blessing. And I'm glad to see all, you know, all the barbers here together. So in LA, it's kind of the same thing I heard that Barbers don't fuck with other barbers. Barbers hate on other barber shops. Barber shop owners don't, you know what I mean? Um, so I was like, okay, I want to try to do something where we bring the barber community together. You know, we're all here for the same reasons. You know what I mean? There's millions and millions of people in the world that we all can't cut. You know, that's why we, 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 we try to work together and build um, like a brotherhood. You know, all the homies from the Bay Area, uh, you could ask Jules, they, they created this whole thing called, um, what is it, Bay Area Brotherhood? Barber brother. Barber brother, yeah. So I mean, something like that is a good example, you know, a lot of those barbers came together as one and now they're going to all these tour, I mean, uh, all these barbershop battles are like everywhere, state to state and just repping the Bay Area, you know. Uh, but at the same time, they're not trying to talk shit to other people, they're just trying to show like there's, um, there's possibilities to work together as one. And uh, I want to kind of share with you guys, um, I feel like we kind of did that in LA. There's a, they threw, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Exotics, Curtis Smith. So he threw the first LA barber battle. So we were kind of skeptical to see who would actually come out and if there's going to be a fight or someone's going to get killed or some shit. But, um, you know, we put it together and we, we actually decided to throw the very first barber meet and greet at Capsule. We didn't know what to expect. We literally put it out there three days before the event and we had barbers from around the world from, we had people from like, Amsterdam, New Zealand, uh, all throughout the States, um, people from Vancouver, people, a few people from Canada actually came down. And um, just seeing that everyone was in there, nothing was going on. We were just there to just meet and greet. I had bottles and drinks for everyone. And uh, it was just a way to see if people would actually just start fucking with each other and just chopping it up. And sure enough, if you look now um, on Barbershop Connect and all these other barbershops on Instagram, they're all posting Oh, meet, meet and greet or Dapper Sundays or this and that. So I kind of feel like we created and built that whole um, movement. And uh, to be here in front of you guys, I want to kind of see the same thing going on here in Toronto. You know, um, actually, how many people here are uh, from Toronto or like has a shop in Toronto? What about Mississauga? Oakville? Brampton? Uh, Montreal? <laughs> um, but yeah, so the whole thing is just um, 
you guys should just all network, you know, exchange numbers, exchange business cards, and just build together. You know, you guys could do uh, collabs with each other, whether it's t-shirts or pop-up shops at different shops, you know what I mean? And just support support one another because we're all in this for the same reason. You know, no one's better than, than this person, this person ain't better than that. He, could, he may cut better um, than this person, but it's all just different techniques. We all learn different ways, but at the end of the day, we all give out a, you know, a cut. We're all here as barbers, we all have jobs, you know what I mean? And I feel like, I was just talking to Randy um, earlier, and our profession is probably one of the professions that will never die. You know, this is, this is a, a really good profession because if you look at us compared to other people that are doctors or lawyers or nurses or whatever it is, we could pretty much make six digits easily as barbers, you know? And what I tell my barbers is, I don't really have a set rate in my barber shop. I know uh, maybe you guys have a set standard rate. Uh, we actually started off twenty dollars a haircut, um, and the area that we actually that that we're in, we're in East Hollywood, but we're kind of like on the downer side. Um, it used to be like hood, like really hood, and uh, a lot of gangs in that area. Uh, but if you look at down the street from our shop, literally barber shops are charging five dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars at the most. So I was like, you know what, I can't really downgrade myself to that level and charge 10 or 15 bucks. I'll start at 20, see how it goes, and it worked out. Business started picking up, marketing was still going on, still handing out flowers, business cards, all that. And then we're like, okay, you know what, let's step it up a bit more. Let's add stuff to our service, you know. Let's start offering shampoos, uh, for a shampoo wash for every client. Start charging 25. We're, right now we're at the point where we're charging 35 to 40 dollars. Why? Because of the service. Um, I know before it's more like you walk into a barber shop, you look like, damn, this is a dope shop. They probably charge a lot, but at the same time, um, like most of you guys are here, so like uh, Thomas was saying, less is more. So you could have the simplest barber shop, but the greatest service. You know what I mean? So you could charge your 30 or 40 or 50 bucks even, but you're gonna give that client something that they haven't gotten at a, at a barber shop before. So we started doing that at the shop, and. Um, all my barbers were getting together and trying to figure out, okay, dude, what what could we do to, to make us better? What could we do to up uh, to up our service? We I, I set up meetings at least once a month with my barber just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're all motivated, we're all hungry, and uh, we're all just trying to figure out what what's the next step for us, you know. So, um, like I said, um, branding now, like branding myself, um, it it was it was tough for me to, to brand myself and put my name out there in L.A. Like I said, no one really knew who the hell I was. Um, my whole thing moving to LA, the reason why is because I wanted to become a celebrity barber. <clears throat> you know, I was out here cutting for a few years and um, I just, I was just tired of cutting at the shop all the time. I worked at like three or four different shops out here and then um, I left all that and just started cutting in my condo. I did that for about a year and then my next step was out to open up my own shop here in Toronto or to move out and just do something new. And that's always been a part of me, I always wanted to do. Um, so I went to LA, like told, like, you know, um, a couple thousand miles away from here. And uh, a few people were like, why didn't you just move to New York? I was like, it's too close to home and it's pretty much similar to Toronto. So I, I did the LA jump and um, it was tough. You know, first few months is really hard. Um, tell you the truth, maybe four or five months in, um, I was sick for about a month, and I'd call home crying to my parents, like, and calling my homies, like, dude, I can't do this. I don't know why I'm here. I think I made a mistake. I can't. I gotta move back. And my mom and dad told me, like, no, we don't want to see you. We don't want to um, have you come back home because we know how bad you wanted this. You know, you literally told us this is what you're gonna do. Um, this is what you're gonna make out of yourself. You're gonna open up a shop. You're gonna do this and do that. So I used that as motivation to actually get there. And um, I just rolled with it. I, I kept going, I kept working hard, and I had my goals, you know. Every morning I wake up and I see it. You know, I want to a barbershop on Melrose. That was my dream. You know, I was able to accomplish that. Two, I want to become a celebrity barber. I told myself I'd give myself five years before I cut my first celebrity. That shit happened two weeks in. You know, and from that point on, it's just um, a domino effect. Everything was just happening so fast. Opportunities are coming left, right, you know. And um, at the same time, I'm looking at it like, I'll take whatever opportunity as long as I know it'll benefit me. And especially now with the shop, it'll benefit my shop. 
you know, now uh, I was able to, um, I'm blessed to have, you know, a pretty good clientele, um, a celebrity clientele to the point where I could start feeding my barbers. You know, I, I've never been raised as a greedy dude. Um, so I've been sending some of my barbers out. You know, sometimes I get called to do three, four house calls a day, but I can't do that. You know, so I'll go out, do my house call in the morning, come back to the shop, you know, and then head back out again and come right back to the shop. Most people, they'll be fine with doing like, you know, one hotel call for the day because it's good money. And they're like, I ain't gotta go back 